Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to another episode of Condo Insider. Uh, my name is uh, Jane Sugimura. I'm going to be your host for the show today. And uh, today we're going to be talking about benchmarking utilities. And the reason why we're talking about this is there was a bill that was introduced uh, in the city council. I think it was uh, a couple of weeks ago. I know it passed first reading. And then recently there was a second uh, hearing on second reading. And uh, at the time, we didn't know anything about it. And so we were kind of uh, off guard. And so we've decided that you know, we need to become involved with this because uh, the bill is going to require condominiums and co-ops to do benchmarking of, of water and electricity. And uh, we're gonna, uh, we're having uh, Ben uh, Sullivan uh, from the Honolulu Office of Climate Control, Sustainability, and Resiliency uh, here to explain things to us uh, so that we understand what's going on. And hopefully um, we will be able to educate you so that if you have a concern, there's still time for you to uh, uh, participate in the deliberations because this bill still has, is, uh, is still being uh, considered by the city council it hasn't passed out yet and so uh, I want to welcome uh, as my guest today Ben Sullivan who is the uh, energy program manager for the Honolulu Office of Climate Control. Thank you Ben for being with us. Thank you Jane really appreciate the opportunity to be here today. Yeah thank you for coming to explain to us what this what, what benchmarking is all about. Uh, can you tell us exactly you know what is your background in this area? Sure. Sure. My background, um, as far as education, is I have a bachelor's degree in environmental design from the University of Colorado. I have been working in for municipal government for over 10 years in similar roles. And so I came to the city and county about one year ago from the county of Kauai, where I served in, as the energy and sustainability coordinator for 10 years. And prior to that, I did some work with electric utilities, uh, KIUC over on Kauai Island, as well as uh, some building design and architecture work um, and, and basically what was a, a previous career um, before that. And so you, now you're with the Honolulu Department of Climate Change. That's correct. The Office of Climate Change, Sustainability and Resiliency, which is attached to the mayor's office here in the Fossil Building. Okay. And what, so what do you do in your capacity of energy program manager? Sure. So the, the primary guidance that I have is that from, as the energy program manager is comes from a document called the, the city's climate action plan. The climate action plan was adopted actually about one year ago by the city council. And it provides guidance for the city as to how to proceed with both policies and programs to help our whole island to address concerns around climate change and climate change mitigation. So it's primarily a document that talks about energy policy, both with buildings and with transportation, and, and then also some with waste and, and really outlines strategies for the next for the next five years, but really for the long haul in terms of how we, how we continue to reduce our emissions eventually down to zero. And so it's a very challenging um, mission that we have and it's, it's very um, broad, but we basically support agencies across the city. And then we also support the you know, island-wide efforts to achieve the goals I just outlined. And uh, to, uh, today we're here to talk uh, about benchmarking because there's a bill in the city council uh, and it's bill 22. It's pending before the city council, and it would require condominiums and co-ops in Honolulu to make annual benchmarking reports to the city as to their usage of water and electricity. First of all, what is benchmarking? Great question, great question. So, so just to clarify, um, it's not singling out condominiums and, and co-ops. It's actually all, all buildings over a certain size. And so it would include all commercial buildings of, of various different types as well with the exclusion of industrial buildings. So it includes retail buildings, it includes commercial buildings, it includes hotels as well. Um, benchmarking is just like what it sounds like or what you hear in business, right? It's performance benchmarking. So, so often in business, we, we establish performance, performance metrics and we compare ourselves to industry standards as a way to improve our performance. Energy benchmarking is very much the same thing. So it's really saying, how, how can we create some foundational information that allows a building in the, in the area of energy and water utilities to compare itself to other similar buildings and so that you can gain valuable information about your performance. And so 
and since you know this is the uh, city office of climate con uh, uh, change that's uh, uh, sponsoring or, or, or supporting this bill, why is this information important to the city? So the, the information, again, aligns with the directive that we have in the climate action plan. So I don't know how much time you spend in the, in the energy side of things, Jane. I'm definitely looking forward to learn, learning more about the condo side of things. But, but from the energy perspective, the state has very, very ambitious goals and that they include trying to get to zero carbon emissions by 2045. And this is, this is already in state statute. And so buildings represent a, a third of the emissions we create on the island of Oahu. So, so a full one third of all the emissions, you know, the other two thirds are roughly coming from ground transportation and air transportation. There's a little bit there from waste and those are very approximate numbers, but you get the idea. So, so buildings are a very important source of emissions that we have to try and reduce. And certainly one of the ways we do that, as everyone knows, is we, we create renewable energy. So HECO does a lot of work with solar and wind and other sources in order to, to avoid emissions re resulting from combustion of coal or oil. But in addition to that, we need to also become more efficient because as you probably know, there's just not, simply not enough space on the island for all those resources to, to, to supply an endless amount of energy if, if our energy use keeps growing. And so what the purpose of the bill is, is the purpose of the bill is to support informed decision-making in buildings through building management so that everyone has an opportunity to, to reduce their energy use. And then specifically for policymakers like myself, it creates a much clearer perspective on how buildings are currently performing and where we can provide help. So whether there might be policy help or there might be financial help or other help able for, for buildings that are performing poorly, we were able to, to advocate for those changes. At, 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 this, at this point in time, that information is actually fairly difficult to come by, which I know sounds it sounds like it should be easy to get, but it's really not. And how would this uh, information be helpful to condos and 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 co-ops? I mean, because it's not something that you know we do. Sure. And so how how would it help us? So that's a that is a key question, and that's a great question. And and I believe the way it would help you is again being able to say, okay, how is our building? You know, obviously um, co-op managers and building managers are already in many cases very energy conscious because they recognize that important. It's an important fixed cost or operational cost that they have to deal with. And so they probably do a lot of things already to drive down their energy use. Is that, is that a fair assumption? That is a fair assumption. And, you know, with condominiums, I mean, we're, we're very cognizant about cost because, uh, as you know, with condominiums, uh, our unit owners end up, mm -hmm. you know, having to pay for the cost of operating the building. And, and, and a lot of our utilities, the water and the electricity, there's really basically um, one main meter. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the, the payments are then collected from uh, all of the unit owners. So if anybody is uh, using a lot of water or running their air, uh, air conditioning 24 seven, we're all paying for it. Right. And, and, and in, in fact, you know, we are, uh, the buildings are working to be more efficient because I know uh, electrical submetering is a very popular uh, trend, and I know my building went through it. And and you know when we went through the uh, electrical submetering, I mean because typically you have one meter for a, an association for a building, mm -hmm. okay. And, and so we get one heco bill, and and with with the submetering, with the submetering there are uh, meters in every unit, right? And and then the association is able to read and do separate buildings to all the unit owners. And right. what happened when we did the electrical submetering and HECO did come and Hawaii Energy came and you know they had a um, a town we had a town meeting mm -hmm. where we had the owners you know uh, come and basically ask questions about this new process and it what what we learned is that when people have to pay for their own electricity they didn't run their air conditioner twenty four seven because they because it it, it, it hit home that, hey, if I use this, I'm gonna pay for it. And my neighbor's not gonna subsidize it. And, 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 and overall, the electrical usage in the building went down. That's absolutely right. And so this is really a very much related principle. And so I think, I think if we talk about just kind of zooming out for a second, we talk about the evolution of metering and how buildings have been managed. As you pointed out, a lot of buildings were much more commonly master metered, you know, 10, 20, 30 years ago. 
And, and the trend in the market today, and really has been for actually several decades, is individual submetering per unit. So if you go buy a new condominium, as you know, uh, the vast, vast majority of them are submetered already at, at purchase. And that's been the case for, I, like I'd say, a couple of decades. I don't have the exact date. But the older buildings, you're correct, they had to come back in and submeter retroactively. And that did a lot for energy management. One thing that it, it obviously, it creates awareness and it creates user decisions. The, 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 what benchmarking allows us to do again is to look at the whole building's performance. And so because there's not a master meter anymore in many cases, it's just a bunch of individual meters. We don't know how the overall building is performing as compared to its like reasonable comparable peers. So what I mean by that is you might, you might as a building manager say, okay, I'm doing everything I can because I've replaced LED lights and you know, I've, I've done this and that. But if you don't have a way to compare that, like for example, by saying, what other buildings in the city have, you know, 40 apartment units about the same size. They also have a pool or maybe they don't have a pool, just similar characteristics. And how are they performing? And are, am I in the right ballpark? Am I in, you know, am I in the median or am I a high, high energy user? Or am I a low energy user? Without that information, it's really difficult to know if there's other things you can do to, to improve your energy use. And then it's also difficult for us as policymakers to know where the most support is needed because we don't have a clear picture of exactly how each building is performing. We just have a, a list, a really, really, really long list of meters that show how much, you know, how much people are using in individual units. And so this is about creating visibility. Um, another aspect of the program, Jane, is, is called the transparency component. And the transparency component is about letting the public know how a building is performing overall as well. So again, this, is, this, this, this proposed program is not targeted just to um, residential buildings, it's to all building types. But for any given tenant, let's say you have a renter in one of your buildings, they, they, they're able to get visibility into how the overall building is performing versus other buildings. And so that, that information can help inform purchasing decisions. And as you know, that's already effectively in place for the sale of individual units, but it doesn't exist at the building level. So, so that's really what's behind it. You know, one of the things that some cities have done um, as a result of these programs is they've set up, they've set up funds to help with retrofits, especially for affordable housing, you know, not always throughout the whole market, or, but for housing where the people are already perhaps in a, and, and on the lower side of the income scale, they'll set up additional resources that are given, that are provided to those buildings so that they can actually do, do retrofit and continue to drive down those bills. So I, I hope that starts to explain it, but there's certainly a lot more to talk about and I'm happy to, to continue answering some questions. Right. And, you know, with with, uh, with the condos, other than, you know, the sub metering, I mean, we have replaced our lighting with LED lights uh, mm -hmm. and we have um, uh, I know that um, we are looking. I mean, a lot of buildings are doing PV panels yep. Right? Yep. Yep. to, to, to uh, uh, you know, make, make uh, the electricity more efficient. Uh, why aren't single-family homeowners included in Bill 22? That's a great question. And the reason they're not included is because at some point, there's a diminishing return relative to the, the work required to actually track the usage of the building. And it's also because at, at the individual homeowner level, you're already getting all the information for the performance of the building. So the program really targets building management as opposed to individual owners. So as the audience to help potentially improve performance, as well as policymakers and others, as I described. But with a single family home, that information is already readily available. There's one meter to the home. The individual knows how it's performing and they have total control over those decisions. And so that there's not as, there's not as strong of a need for comparative um, benchmarking. Um, you know, but with a condominium, too, you know, uh, it's 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 not you know like with water. Mm -hmm. With water, we there. I I I'm not. I don't think we've come up with a way where we can do submetering uh, of water, and you know, and and that's a concern when you have. Uh, I know in my building you have rumblings when you have uh, you know people who have their cousins and everybody. You know, you have a unit, a three bedroom unit, and you have fourteen people living in there, right. and, and people are yelling and screaming about water. Right? right, and if you're if you're a single person, uh, you know, living in the unit, you're supporting that person's water usage. Right, and you know, so so you know, so there is grumbling about, and there's nothing you can do about it. That's right, you're, you're correct, and 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 this program doesn't address that specific concern, but I I will 
actually give you a little anecdote from another city who implemented this. I don't know if this would ever this would ever apply to the end of the buildings you're familiar with, but I did. It was specific to water, so I'll share it right now. So there's a, I think I want to say it was San Jose who interest who who in, initiated a benchmarking program, but I, I could have the city wrong, and I'll follow up with you. But the point of the story is anyway that this this building manager did the benchmarking and saw looked across their portfolio of several dozen buildings and saw one that where the water use was just absolutely out of control higher than the other buildings, like like orders of magnitude more water. And they went to investigate it and they found out there was two individuals who lived in the building that were running a car wash business from the building during during daytime hours. And it just had happened to get past the building manager because they weren't there at those times. And so they were actually taking all that water and utilizing it. And, and they were able to make the correction because, they, you know, the building manager hadn't otherwise known. And I, obviously, that's a very extreme case. But my point is that information is power. And when you have better information, both comparative and, and historical for your use, you can begin to say, okay, you can, you can troubleshoot, right? Like if, you're, if your building last year was, was using you know, 10,000 kilowatt hours and this year all of a sudden it's using 15,000 kilowatt hours, you can ask those questions. Whereas, whereas if you had a, you know, perhaps at the same time you had a new manager come in, they maybe didn't know that it used to only use 10,000. And so they just say, okay, well, it's efficient. We've done everything. We've done what we can, but they may not know that there's a piece of equipment that's failing and it, it's not showing any signs. It's just performing poorly and giving off a lot of heat, right? So that 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 can create a lot of waste. And so this is again just a tool to to simplify that. One thing that I think is really important to emphasize because we we really recognize when we set up this program that we cannot burden people with additional administrative chores that are just busy work. So. One of the one of the objectives we laid out when we started designing this program is we have to make it as easy as possible for building managers to comply with the benchmarking ordinance. And so um, I'm happy to go into more detail on that, but I'm going to start by just saying the first conversations we had, Jane, were with the utilities and especially with HECO, because what we didn't want was, right, if you're trying to get all this information about your building performance, the last thing we want to do is ask someone to go out and talk to every unit owner and try to get their bills. That's a that's just a disaster. So we talked to HECO and we said, are you able to provide aggregated data for the whole building if the building manager, you know, the entity that pays the common area bill approaches you for that information? And they said, yeah, we can do that. And so we have worked through systems and we've, we've actually tested it with them on city buildings because, as you know, the city has some housing as well. So we went through that process, made sure it worked, and we're able to get aggregated data. And so the beauty of that, again, is it streamlines the process tremendously. So there is a process to benchmarking. There is a little bit of work, especially in the first year, but we're doing everything we can and we will continue to do everything we can to minimize kind of the extra labor associated with, with getting it done. Right, and you know, but the uh, the ordinance, I noticed for condominiums and co-ops, uh, the board of directors is responsible for the reporting. That's correct. And, and so the board of directors has Within their authority, they can obviously put it to the management company to do that if they choose, and and it's obviously likely there'd be a fee for that. Our our advocacy and part of our work is to reach out to the management associations and make them aware of the resources that help streamline the process. So if they have a client in the form of a board come to them and say we need to benchmark, we want to make sure the management companies know that it can be done affordably, especially when you're in the position of the management company and you can do 25 buildings, right? It's a lot easier, as you know, to do anything 25 times than it is to do it once by a bunch of different people. And so that's, that's one possible route that will save a lot of time and effort as well. But certainly there's, you know, there's cities around the country that have in, implemented benchmarking and there's plenty of best practice that we're following as well. We, we're making an investment in a, in a very um, sophisticated custom, customer information system and support system that will allow us to have a help desk and have history of calls and to understand what problems people are having and how we can follow up and support. So this is not just something that we're gonna say, please do it and then and then abandon you. We're, we're hiring um, an additional staff member on the team who's gonna be charged with the benchmarking program explicitly. And and we it's our intention to prove that that we can be partners on this. We, you know, we need the results, but we can't just demand them and then walk away. We, we intend to partner, we intend to, to, to solve problems in collaboration with those who have to perform the work. I'm glad to hear that. But why can't the city get this information from the Board of Water Supply and from HECO? That's a great question. So from the Board of Water Supply, 
we, you know, we can get it. And, and in fact, we're working on streamlining that transfer of, of data and information as much as we can. But it's, again, the, the purpose of benchmarking is not just for us to have it, it's for the building manager to have that information. So we want, we want, the, we want the building that, and the person who's responsible for essentially paying the utility bills to have this comparative information in front of them. On the, on the HECO side, we don't regulate, we don't have, a, have jurisdictional authority over HECO. And so in order, for, in order for us to get that information, it takes the building owner going to HECO, asking for it, which they have the right to it, and then sharing it with us. And so that, you know, that's, that's kind of part of how the process works. Um, but again, as far as, as far as accessing the data, it is, it is, we've already made substantial efforts to streamline that process, and we're going to continue to do that all the way throughout because, you know, just like everybody, we, you know, this is the first time we're setting this up for Honolulu. So there is a learning curve for us and there certainly will be for building owners, but it, but it's our intention again, to just continue to work with people and to collaborate and to find ways to, to streamline these. As an example, it's our intention to have workshops that are specific to, um, to multi-unit residential properties sometime, both, both early, you know, after the bill passes just informationally, but then more importantly, more technically based workshops that are kind of oriented towards helping somebody who's trying to solve that problem at a time prior to the, the bills or prior to the reporting being due. So the, you know, the, the schedule as of now in the bill is, um, has been amended so that the first reporting period for the largest buildings is, doesn't come due until June of 2023. And so buildings over 10, uh, 100,000 square feet would be due June of 2023. And then buildings over 50,000 square feet due June of 2024, and then buildings over 25,000 square feet due June 2025. And then, and then annually, once you have your base building entered, you just have to just enter that utility data, which is really actually a pretty quick process once you understand how it works. So it's that first year where there's a little bit of work to enter the basic building information. And then in subsequent years, it's really just about getting the, the 12 months of utility data for each of, the util for each of the energy and water utilities into the system. Okay, so for, for, for example, then for, for a condominium, if, we, 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 if this law, bill passes and yep. it gets implemented, and, and, and so how, how does this work? Does the building manager uh, then contact HECO and say, okay, th there's this law we, we need for HECO to provide this information to our property manager, Hawaiiana? Is that, is that well, what happens? We have to sign something and then HECO will just transfer the information over? Or do they give it to us and then we have to give it to our property manager? So, so HECO will provide the, the information to whomever is already on the common area bill. So if, if say, for example, if Hawaiiana is the, is, the, is the entity that is writing the checks to HECO, then it would be Hawaiiana who would, who would request the information and then they could, they could either give it to you or perform the benchmarking on your behalf. If, if it, the association is the one who's writing the checks, then it would be the association that needs to reach out to HECO. And that's just a, simply an authorization letter. If, if you wanted to just give Hawaiiana agency to, to get that data, you could just write a quick letter, which HECO will have a template for, and just say, we authorize Hawaiiana to get our data for the purpose of benchmarking. And then that data would be made available. Okay. And then, um, and then so, so, so our involvement our uh, uh, meaning, you know, an association's involvement appears to be minimal. Well, we, there's we basically authorized HECO to release information to our property manager, and they're supposed to take over and and do it. So the, there's a there's a business decision for the association, right? So we don't want to we don't want to skim over that. It, there there is a cost to doing this work. So the associate presumably your property manager is going to inform you of that cost, so you can decide whether you want to use them or just you know, have some other methodology to do it. I don't know what that would be, but, but that's, that is an, you know, I don't want to skim over that because we recognize that's an important part of the conversation. So, so yes, it, 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 the expectation would be that property management companies would provide this service to their clients in the form of HOA boards or AOAOs. And, you know, I have talked to, you know, uh, one of, you know, two of them, two, mm -hmm. two representatives of the management companies and, and they said, well, until we find out what it entails, we don't mm -hmm. know what, but assuming we have to spend some time, we're gonna charge you guys. And I said, okay, do you have an idea what that fee will be? And they said, well, until we find out how much time we're gonna to have to spend on this, we don't know, but if we're gonna to have to spend time, you're, you, you will be billed. Right, and, and I, I will, 
speculate here, but I will speculate that the, the management companies that are able to do this quickly and understand the scope of it will be able to perform the service really inexpensively. And as an example, um, some of the management companies that, that manage proper, residential properties in Hawaii already do this in other states because they work nationally. And so, so they on their staff, you know, whether it be not necessarily their Hawaii staff, but on their corporate staff, have knowledge about how to perform these services. And the, and the programs are very, very similar because we all use the same benchmarking tool provided by the federal government through the EPA. So it's, so it's very similar. And so they, sh they should be able to share that information. But part of the outreach we're go going to be doing between now and, and June 2023, that first deadline, is to both HOAs and associations, and also to, and to building management companies to make, to make sure they can answer those questions. And so certainly that's important. And one of the reasons we actually delayed the implementation date was getting, once we understood better that, hey, you know, this has to be in a budget. So you, you got it. This information has to be available by September, October at the latest. So this can get into the budget process. And then the following year, that funding is available and, and can be executed, even if it's just a small amount, right? We can't just we can't just slough it off and say, well, figure it out. It's got to be in the budget. And so, so that, that's one of the reasons that the, we push back the date. And it's also the reason we'll be doing extensive outreach, you know, again, like I said, to clarify. But, but there's, you know, right now the conversation is about the, how the bill functions or how the program functions. And then once on passage, it will be about providing more information so people can learn and, you know, at the, at the level of management and those that are most, I guess, most um, have the most touch points. And then, disseminate that information, as well as finally, at the, at the level of those performing the task, we'll be, we'll be providing actually like hands-on technical training for, and, and also um, help and support. So you can, you, know, you can already read today about what it takes. And so a, a, a proactive company, if they have the time and resources can do the investigation now and learn, okay, what is it gonna take us to do this and be prepared? But we understand that people don't always have time to be proactive. So there's, there's trainings online and then we are gonna have like I said, the, you know, the opportunity and the format is still being worked out, but likely workshops where you just show up as a building manager and you say, okay, I'm trying to perform these tasks. I, I manage, you know, 10 buildings. Here's my 10 buildings. Here's what I've, here's where I'm stuck. Can you help me with X problem or Y problem? I can't find the exact square footage of my building, or I don't know how to answer this question. It's asking me about water usage, right? There's not a ton of questions to input in the system, but they're, they're new to people. And so, we recognize that we have to be there to help them answer the questions or else it's just a disaster. Yes. And then, you know, we're running out of time. There's two things I want to raise. Number okay. one, is there a, a, a website where people can go to get more information? Yes. So um, I will, again, share the link. It's not a very easy to read link, but we have an FAQ document on our website. Um, so it's one of the, should I put it in the chat and then perhaps you guys can post it? Is that possible? Yeah, or you can just read it and read it out while, 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 while. Okay. Uh, I'll do that. So it's www.resilientoahu backslash S backslash H N L all cap space benchmarking space FAQ dot PDF. Um, again, it's a mouthful. So, and and if you send it to me in the chat, I will make sure we circulate it. And I also wanted to let you know, and I sent this to you in an email. There are certain groups that you should probably, uh, you know, get in touch with, and that's Murma. Murma's a big group, mm -hmm. and you know, and it started off with just Mo Ely Ely Resident Managers Group, but now, I mean, they get like a hundred guys out, you know, uh, guys and gals when they do their luncheons. And you know you should you know contact them and 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 try try to be at one of their meetings uh, because uh, you're going to have a lot of people there and these are the guys who interact with the boards right, right. these are the resident managers right and, very very helpful thank you and and and, and, and IRAM and ARM and I, so we, ARM is part of IRAM so if you contact IRAM uh, you know the, the, I think that's that's a resource and those are the the guys you know who uh, who work with the board because. The board is, you know, they're volunteers and they yeah. rely on their resident managers and their property managers and their managing agents to keep them informed on what's happening. And that's why we were, we felt kind of blindsided when I got this email one day from Carol Fukunaga. Did you know about this? Right. And it was like, my God, and, I didn't know about this. What's this and all I wanna, about? And I want to own that, Jane, and, and take responsibility and apologize to you. We did reach out to IROM in about February, but apparently it didn't get back to everybody. And so, we, you know, we didn't know. 
we, and again, this is on us, but we didn't reach every single group. And so my apologies, because it is very important that you have that information. So thank you for the additional contacts. And we're going to continue to outreach. You know, we, we did reach out to BOMA and CAI. Um, Phil, just, just a little while ago, Phil Nearney, um, Associa Hawaiian, Hawaiian Properties, Hawaiiana, Touchstone, CBRE on the commercial side, um, Kamehameha Schools, a, a lot of outreach, but obviously it's never enough. And so, again, my apologies. And thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to share information. And we, we look forward to partnering. Okay. And, and thank you for being on, on uh, uh, Condo Insider today because. You know, this was like, like I said, you know, when I got that email from Carol Fukunaga, I really felt like we were being blindsided, you know, because nobody had mentioned it. And, you know, when I was asking around, it was like, no, we, we you know, we haven't heard. And so, you know, so thank you very much for being on our show. And, um, and we will try to get the word out. And, and if you could contact these others to, to help you with, you know, getting the message out, uh, I think uh, that will be helpful. And thank you so much for being on our show today uh, to uh, tell us about what benchmarking is all about, uh, because I think it's it's something that's that's going to happen. And uh, we appreciate the uh, Office of uh, uh, of Climate Change uh, agreeing to our request to put off implementation to 2023. We really appreciate the extra time. And thank you so much for uh, appearing on our show and for our viewers. Uh, spread the word. Uh, share the uh, Condo Insider, Insider show with uh, your friends and colleagues because this is coming. And if you have a concern, uh, you know, show up at the city council meeting because there's still a third, third reading. There's a, a committee meeting still on this bill and it hasn't been adopted. So if you have a concern, now's the time to speak up. And thank you for joining us for this episode of Condo Insider. And please join us next week for another episode of Condor Insider for people who live and work in condominiums. Thank you very much. Mahalo and aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.